depends if I'm celebrating something or not. My choice of drink tends to be tonic wine. Uh, so that either comes in five glass or 10 glass measurements. So it depends on that. It depends at a venue itself. I won't drink that much. I'll have a couple of shots maybe or a pint. But if I'm having a pre beforehand, I'll drink quite heavily. I will show up with like a 10 glass of Buckfast or some vodka or something and just kind of get very plastered before I go in because it's cheaper. Uh, well, I just should go for like beers and magnets and stuff like that. So I wouldn't say a lot, like. Sort of, there's some nights I go out and I drink guts of a 10 glass or a 10 glass and there's some nights I go out and wouldn't want any spirits, just drink beer. Yeah, I tend to usually just because of the prices of clubs and bars. Recently it has been Buckfast. Um, I would go on vodka before, maybe whiskey or bourbon. Yeah, every time. You've got your own alcohol, you know how much you're drinking, you're keeping track of it. And also kind of the fun of it, it gets you in the mood to party because you're surrounded by people that you like and that you're friends with and that you love and all that. And you're all going out together, it's a lot more fun because going into a club or going to a destination with these people being at the same level of slightly messed up. It's quite fun and it keeps you going throughout the night. Mostly beer, sometimes it's like a special occasion, you know, like vodka or something. <laughs> Jaeger. Weed mostly. Maybe. Maybe a line. Maybe an E here and there. Um, I have when I was drunk, but they were, it was usually I smoke. I smoke occasionally whenever I'm drunk because I've, I guess, practiced that. Like I, I know what my limits are. I've mixed with other things as well, and that was purely through experimentation. Where I've never done it again. I feel like right. That's the consequences. This is. That's how that turns out. Next question, please. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Just mainly like the things I say to people. Like I don't mean half the things I say. And I'll just go on really weird. I think everyone's made regrets when they're drunk. Um, I'm not here for a long time, I'm here for a good time, hi. But um, nothing, nothing I overly regret. Oh, there was, we went for tech drinks one year and I showed up to the harbour and I threw up almost immediately as we got in because I had like two double whiskey and cokes or something. Probably be a little mouth and shite like. It's the key, texting your ex. Taking drugs, put the height of it really, you just don't do that stuff. Nah. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. No. 
And I think I can actually confidently say that I don't. I always class kind of binge drinking with spirits, kind of vodka, rum, that kind of stuff. Um, I think obviously if you do a few shots start the night, you know, it's fun. You do that with your friends. But I think if you're starting the night off with like a five or 10 glass or something, and then you're still continuously, I think it, it depends on each person. If you can handle a 10 glass of vodka and 50 shots of tequila afterwards, and you can still see your, say your name and walk afterwards, then that's fine. But I think if you're at the point where your friends or you're depending on other people to get you home safe, it's selfish, it's kind of unfair on others. I think that that's what I consider binge drinking. An 18 year old who's an alcohol or a 40 year old who's an alcoholic, I would be more judgmental of that person than an 18 year old who's an alcoholic. They might consume the same amount of alcohol the same time periods weekly, but I think if you're 18, you're meant to go out and get fucked. Obviously, if you're at the stage where you can be considered an alcoholic, it's not good, it's not healthy to talk to someone, but there's still time to do that. I feel like if you're 40 and you're still kind of not wise up and not an adult yet, there's next to no hope for you. Binge drinking would probably be like just going out too much than what you should be. Like drinking up, go, just drinking for the excuse of drinking, sort of. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it can be controlled. Um, for, for myself, I think the drinking limit for a week should possibly be changed. I think it can all it can just vary from person to person. I don't think there should be a set drinking limit. I know a lot of people who exceed the limit more than myself, so I don't feel too bad about it. I was out on a night out and I was having a few drinks, quite a lot of drinks, and I was texting a friend and she wanted me to go and lift her so I took the car and went and lifted her. I was sitting in a mill town garage texting and the police had drove past and I seen them turn so I pulled out of mill town and went on down valley breaks and that's when they put on the sirens and the flashing lights but I just didn't stop, I went on. And then they had to fall back because they're not allowed to pursue it in case I had a crash or anything, and it was their fault. And after I, after they had stopped following me, I pulled off, and then I I heard my phone ringing, so I pulled in. And it was my sister. I picked up. She said, "Where are you? What are you doing out in the car? Police are here." So my heart kind of sunk, and then I drove back to the house, and there they were. More than enough. I had to wait nearly a box of beer and half a wall of Captain Morgan's. So it was very well on. Received seven convictions. Uh, failure to stop, failure to display health plates, failure to be accompanied by a qualified driver, no insurance, no license, dangerous driving, and taking a vehicle without consent. The court gave me 200 hours community service at a wee furniture shop in the town called Second Chance. Um, parents weren't happy. As soon as I walked in the door where the police were standing, my mum was standing crying. My sister was standing, she was nearly crying, and my dad just... He just looked as if he wanted to beat the life out of me. And he said to me, if the policeman wasn't there, he would have done that because of the seriousness of what I've done. Two years, I got an 18 month ban and trying to work up the money for insurance as well. It took another half a year because insurance is just unbelievably deadly for someone who has seven convictions and is only 20 and didn't have a license to start with. I went up to Derry to do my extended test and it was an hour long instead of the half an hour I think the normal test is and took three every nook and cranny of dairy. Make sure everything that you're driving spot on. If you don't want anything wrong you failed. 
it was. Horrible. My insurance is, I think the exact figure is £4,872.28 for a year on a one litre Corsa, a three cylinder Egotech. No, not a chance. I wouldn't chance it because if I lost my licence again, there's no hope of me getting a bike anytime soon. It'll be years down the line before the time I get a bike. Um, I'd say think first, because not only could you kill yourself, you could kill someone else as well. And I just don't think it's worth it. After that two years I took off driving. I could have had a class car by now, I could have been driving since 18, like 17, 18, and I could be driving something lethal. My insurance sure is too dear. Car's poo. It's just not worth it, like. Not just.